Welcome to our 2023 Avenger 28 QBSLE. Starting right in the back here, you've got your short cord inlet. So as you pop that open, you're gonna find a little notch in the top right corner there. It's gonna line up with this notch here. Press those in together, little eighth turn to lock it into place and you get the threaded collar there to properly lock it down. In the end of the bumper, if you just reach in, pull that cap out of there, you're gonna find your sewer hose. Take note of those two ears and the adapter here, it's helping hooking it up to your sewer system. The hose itself is about 20 feet long. And we just keep it stored in the bumper back here to help keep any sort of stench out of the unit and keep things just that little bit fresher. In this corner, as well as each part of the trailer, you're gonna find a stabilizer jack. All they do is they run down, contact the ground, give it another turn or so just to firm it up. And that'll get rid of any sort of bounce or sway that you see you have in the unit right now, just to keep things firm while you're out camping. Straight up from there is your cable inlet. Coax cable plug into there, fires up your TV location. Couple of steps down the side and find your sewer outlet. So if you just kind of press on that cap there and give it a turn, it'll pop on out of there. You see you get the same ears here that you had on your sewer hose. You'll just attach it the same way. On the left is a gray valve, on the right is a black. Black valve's controlling your black tank. Black tank is filled from your toilet, so of course it's gonna be your dirtiest water. So we'll dump that first. Once that's done, you can then come to the gray. Gray tank is gonna be filled from your sinks as well as your shower, typically cleaner water. Dump that last to help keep that sewer hose as clean as possible. Down the side of the unit. You can see we got your fresh water tank drain going right there. It's just that little valve there, you just open that up. Simple as that. Filling up your fresh water tanks, just this guy here. You know it's full once you start seeing water spitting out of that vent there. Down underneath it's your city water inlet. Same water hose, I'll just plug into there, turn on the water, and I'll pressurize the lines throughout the unit. Storage compartment here, magnetic latches, hold it open. Inside of here you'll find your water hose. Inside of the water hose you're gonna find a park adapter. 30 amp short cord into there, 15 amp to a standard household outlet. Front of the unit, you have a little two prong plug inlet right there. So it'll be for like a solar panel. You just plug it into there, it charges the batteries. Battery itself is housed inside of this box right here. As long as you're plugged into that short cord in the back or your seven pin to your tow vehicle, that battery is charging for you. There's two knobs there. If you loosen them off and push them back, you can open up this flap and you get access to your propane tanks for the video. Pull this right off and I can show you your change over here. So it's currently green, just letting us know we've got propane in the system. The arrow pointing over here, so we're running off of this tank. If it were to go red while you got uh, this tank opened up, it's just that you know it's now empty. At that point, just flip over to the other one, run off of that tank while you get the other one filled. Standard tongue jack in front, one way's up, other way's down. Other end of your storage compartments here. Inside of here, you're going to find your little manual jack. This is going to be for all your stabilizers. Just that three quarter inch end just fits right on the end. Little T latch here, you just plug right into there, just holds the door open for you. Little bottle opener there as well. Hot water tank here, you just got that keyway, you're just gonna line that up and you can pop it on open. Now all your controls for turning it on are inside of the unit. Before we turn it on though, we just wanna hit this relief valve right there. You should be getting that water coming out. If you're not getting any water coming out of there, there is a chance that it's empty. At that point, you just wanna get all your water turned on. Make sure this guy's full before you fire it up just because you do run the risk of burning out your elements. Once you're done, just lock it in with the keyway. Exhaust for your furnace right beside it. So if you ever run your furnace, it does get hot. So just make sure nothing's blocking that off. G5 protected outlet. Up again, we get your stove vent. So this little flap in here, just to make sure that's opened up so that our fan inside can evacuate any fumes. Once you're done, just press it into place and that'll prevent any sort of dust from picking up in there. Marked by this sticker, you get low point drains. So all those do is they allow the water system to drain itself out. So you get a couple of valves here you can just open up and they just will allow the water system to drain itself out. Back of the unit, you got a little leaf flash there, so you got the dog with it, you can tie him down. Spare tire, as well as the on-the-go ladder mount. Now we'll make our way inside of the unit. So here, just flips on open. Steps, you're just gonna grab that bar, flip it on out, flip that last step over, and it's just step inside. So first things first, the fire extinguisher's right there on the left, that's standard, pull the pin, point, and shoot. This panel beside it has the two screws on either side. That's just access to your hot water tank as well as your water pump. So if you're looking to winterize the unit yourself once it comes time, it's just right in there. Up the wall from there, you get your light switches. The one on the right here does your one entry light. The rest of the lights throughout the unit are just on their own center push buttons there. So we kind of get those as we go. Light switch in the center there does your awning light outside. Awning light is on this switch here. Or sorry, awning switch it's, yep, itself. Open up your awning. Press and hold extend and the awning will make its way out. Once that awning is fully extended, you're going to see a little black flap come down as well as the black of the metal tube. Once you see that, you're going to stop. If you're to continue extending, it can actually wind itself up backwards, in which case, traffic will be underneath the tube, allowing it to then hold water, accelerating the growth of mold and mildew. There's the flap, there's the tube, so you stop right there. Now, if it were to start raining, it's of course going to hold some water, anyways. So, what you can do is grab either arm, front, or rear, just pull straight down on it. 
Then you can see that changes the pitch of the awning out at the head, allowing water to then run off. And I feel like that angle better because it does give you more shade. You can do the same thing with the arm up front. Before you bring it back in though, you just want to make sure these arms are back out straight and fully extended just so you're not running the risk of bending them. Then we'll press and hold the track and the awning will make its way back in. Again, you're just going to watch to make sure that your fabric is over top of the tube. And the last thing to keep in mind is drowning is it does capture a lot of wind. So once you get up to about 15, 20 kilometers an hour wind, you want to leave it cold for You want to bring it back in just so you're not running the risk of bending your arm. Slide out switch works pretty much the same way. It's just on the left side here. So just press and hold the bottom of that, your side will make its way out. Once that slide's fully extended, we're gonna hear some clicks from the motors that are gonna show they've reached their stall. Just like that. So into your front bedroom here. Like I said, all your lights just on their own center push buttons there. So you can see we've got the upgraded mattress in here. If you pick up the foot of mat, the bed, you do get access to your front storage compartment. Right in the head of the bed, it's a little light there. You also get just the open closet space on either side. Lines throughout the unit, just kind of sit where you leave them. Emergency exit here, you just pull this red tab to get rid of the screen, take this handle there, throw it outside, hop on out. TV backer right behind me, it's right the going right there. Power outlet, cable and satellite outlet. You're also pre-wired for Wi-Fi. Entertainment area pretty much on the opposite side of the wall from there. So same TV backer, and you have your AV cables which are hooked into your stereo here. Stereo, pretty straightforward. Power button there is gonna turn it on. It's also gonna mute it, so press and hold to turn it back off. Zone one's your inside set, zone two's your outside set. Cable and satellite outlet, as well as your antenna outlet here. So just pressing that button there to turn it on. That will also help clear up your stereo signal. Storage space underneath. And the slide, center push button light. This light, it's got its push button just on the side there. So you can see your dinette's currently set up as the dinette. If you were to take your table and wiggle it up and out of its legs, the legs will then wiggle out of their bases. The table will then slot onto either ledge there. Take the two back cushions, fill in the center, create your bed. Sofa here does also fold down. So you get the center piece here, which flops down, you get cup holders there. You can also take it up and fold it right down to your bed. And right above my head here is your smoke detector. There we go. That'll help. So in the kitchen here, you get your storage right up top. In here, you're gonna find that binder. That binder's got all of your owner's manuals, any remotes, any keys, anything like that, you're gonna find right in there. Storage, or sorry, a little light right up top. Hot and cold water course, and storage down below. You also get your drawer space here. Microwave, pretty straightforward, just like home. Range vent underneath it, you get your light as well as your fan. This is that fan that you want turned on with that flap outside opened up. Bifold cover just flips on back. Take your knobs, push them in over to high. You can see they just automatically ignite. Once you're done, turn them all off, letting it cool down. Then you can close it back off. For your oven, you're going to press the oven then. That'll turn on the lights. Take that knob in, turn it over to the pilot light. And again, just auto ignition gets going. Once you have it going, you can then select your temperature. Then we're going to hear a click and it'll turn on. Simple as that. Once you're done, just turning it off and then pressing oven again to turn that light off. Return air for your furnace underneath it, so just kind of making sure that grill's not blocked off. 12 volt fridge, so as long as your batteries are charged or charging, this guy's going for you. Converter's right underneath it. Press the top and center to pop on open. All of your breakers in the middle here. Whenever a breaker breaks, it sits in the center, so just turn it off and then back on to reset it. On the right side is all of your fuses. Whenever a fuse pops, you'll get a little red LED right beside it, letting you know exactly which one went. LP detector beside that, propane's heavier than air, it sits on the floor. That guy detects it and starts going off just like a smoke detector would. 
into the kind of hallway here, you get that little light, some pantry space right behind us here. And underneath, into the bathroom. Light just on its own center source, sorry, light switches on the wall. Right. Roof vent there, just turn that knob to open it up. Back corner, you get the switch to turn on the fan. Toilet there, just flips on open, of course, you get your flusher front and center. And on the wall from beside that, you got your hot water tank control right up top. So you're just going to turn that on. You get that little red light there letting you know the ignition sequence will start. Once the sequence has started, it goes out. If it were to come back on, it's just letting you know it hasn't fired up at that point. Just off and back on to reset it. Monitor panel underneath it. So water pump switches in the bottom corner there. You turn that on, turns on your water pump, drawing out of your fresh tank to pressurize your lines. Battery there, so you can see we're currently C for charging. G would be good, F is fair, L is low. Your fresh tank, as you fill that up, goes to a third, two thirds, and full. Same idea for your black and your gray. G fire protected outlet down low. Just test on the left, reset in the center. So if you ever have outlets that don't work, it's the first thing you should check. Hot and cold water at the sink, of course, as well as a little bit of storage underneath it. Just be mindful of your drains and your water lines. Shower, standard getting hose, hot and cold water, of course. Thermostat here, so center right is off. Bar rate is heat, so just select your temperature here and use the auto fan for heat. That'll turn on the furnace. Furnace is moving its air through all your floor registers. Center left is fan. At that point, you can select your high or low fan. Otherwise, you're just leaving it in auto. All the way over to the left is cool. Select your temperature and that'll turn on the air conditioner. Two different options with your air conditioner. You got these two louvers here. If you've got them closed, we'll be using all of our ceiling ductings to move the air. Or you can open them up and it just dumps all of its air into the living room here. So when you first get out to your campsite, you want these open, cool off this area as quickly as possible, then you can close them off and start moving the air throughout. And then just back to center right to turn it off. And then in the back here, you get your bunk room. So there's just a little light right above each bunk. TV back right in the back as well as your outlet for it. And a few lights in these bunks. And then just the open space back here. Simple as that. Uh, any other questions on the unit, please feel free to give us a call 204-237-7272.